for letters in choose. Um, and they'll also have a series of apartments on that level. Obviously, the, uh, the existing warehouse building stops a number of floors below, so there's no floor plan shown on there. This residential floor plan um, on the left-hand side of the plan will repeat up to the ninth floor. When we get to the ninth and top floor of the building, which is the plan on the right-hand side of your screen, um, we then get the further rooftop allotments and garden spaces for residents. So they'll be planting um, spaces, vegetable growing opportunities and things up there. We've also got uh, a greenhouse space planting and a further residence facilities and lounges on that rooftop terrace. Okay, next slide, please. So this is the uh, CGI visualization looking up Blundell Street towards the new build scheme. Um, you've got the new build section, which is in the center of the screen. And just in front of that is the refurbished warehouse building. So what we've tried to do through the design is reference the historic warehouse buildings of the area with the pitch roofs, the hoist slots, the sometimes random, sometimes ordered window arrangement, but also try and reference in some of the more modern character of the Baltic Triangle. If you can just see some of the images on the bottom of the screen on the right hand side. We've got some more modern interventions within the character of the Baltic, which you know really enhance the existing quality buildings that they got there. And we've tried to reference that with some of the uh, changing materials to the top of the buildings. Next slide, please. Uh, so through the uh, view analysis around the city, this view was identified as a potential uh, issue for the impact on the cathedral, the setting of the cathedral. This is the view from Wapping Dock. Um, so we produced a verified view, which this is, um, to assess the impact. Through initial design stages, we did encroach slightly on the base of the, the cathedral. Um, so we redesigned that and pulled the building back. Our building is the grey building. You can just make out to the left of the cathedral. Um, so we ensure that there's no impact on the cathedral setting now. Can the next slide, please? <clears throat> okay, this is just the aerial CGI view uh, showing the rooftop terraces and looking back across the city. Um, so you'll see the brick building at the lower section and the change of materials at the top of the building, maintaining the, the pitch roof line of, of unique to the Baltic warehouses. Um, the lower terrace is the rooftop garden terrace, residence terrace, where they can sit and uh, enjoy some outside space. And then you can see within the, the apex of the framework of the upper roof, uh, that will be the allotment space and the greenhouse spaces for residents. Um, so they can plant and grow fruit and vegetables for use in, the, in their apartments. We believe this will be a positive new addition to the Baltic community. And it's not intended to be a, a full warehouse solution, but it's a considered contemporary interpretation, which we hope you will like. That's all from me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I invite questions now from members? Chair, can I say a few words of a May? Who is that speaking? Colin Williams, I'm the agent. I was going to invite you next, Colin. All right, sorry, you thank you. Go before Phil, you can. Before um, Phil gets questions, would you prefer that? Uh, yes, please, just so okay, I can... Okay, you can come in then, Colin. Um, just try and keep the flow going, if I may. Um, I, I won't say too many words because, to be fair, you've got a very good balanced report in front of you. It, it goes through all of the kind of issues that we set out for the planning assessments and takes you through the kind of key issues that we've had discussions with the officers. So um, I think having read that, you, you, you're taken through a very balanced way that the officer has approached it. Um, just to highlight some of the key issues, it, it is a mixed use scheme, it's not just residential, it's, it's down to 86 units with um, ground floor commercial. As the officer report says that the, the commercial is offered as part of the character of the Baltic and the, the way the SRF encourages the mixed uses. Um, there's some flexibility in there because I know from experience over the years that occasionally there is some time lag between getting commercial units off and tenanted. So we're saying rather than having voids, it doesn't do it, you know, any good to have empty premises and doesn't affect, and affect the viability. There is a condition there that allows us to um, extend the range of commercial uses up to 12 months. Um, the scale has very much been a key issue. As the architect pointed out, we've reduced it. It's gone down to part seven as, and, and part nine stories above the ground floor. And the top of them floors, I think you've seen from the images, are quite unique in the way it will be developed as a rooftop garden and allotment space. In the way that things have gone in recent months, I think uh, residents would appreciate being able to get out and get fresh air um, in, in that kind of scheme. 
Um, the agent of change is probably one of the biggest issues that you will have discussed in many schemes in recent years in the Baltic. Um, I was at planning committee when I probably first discussed a number of years on the scheme next door to this site, um, the one that you saw in the images in, in a light buff brick scheme where the agent of change first came up um, with Kitchen Street um, nightclub. And the discussion quite rightly pointed out there that it was an impact on amenity um, the planning policy is in place to deal with that, and it's about balancing the land uses within that area and the changing transformation of the area, trying to, um, you know, accept the number of land uses which the SRF and policy um, of the local plan, or CC6, is encouraging. Um, and it quite rightly points you to the way that conditions are encouraged, including in the NPPF, as set out in your report. And that condition has been um, advised as from your environmental health officer as being acceptable. And it, it is actually what happened on the scheme next door. It's exactly what happened on the scheme next door. So it was very much part of our focus in discussions and in the assessments. Um, overall, I hope that having read the report, you can see it's a well-balanced report with the scheme being um, in relation to scale, similar to the site next door. It's been amended to ensure that the impact on heritage assets to the Anglican Cathedral and the World Heritage Site. Um, so I hope your recommend, recommendation of the officer will be accepted and thank you for your time and we'll take any questions. I invite questions from members. Um, I've got one from Councillor Thompson. Um, if you want a question answered in particular by the architect or the agent, could you make that clear? Otherwise, I'll leave it up to you to decide between yourselves, Philip and Colin, um, who's going to answer the question. So, Councillor Thompson, would you like to put your question? Um, actually, I've changed my mind. I think oh. mine's a more appropriate question for one of our officers. Okay. Are there any other questions from members? Yeah, just a couple, Chair. Yes, come in, please. That's Malcolm, isn't it? Yeah, that, yeah. That's probably, probably for the architect. Um, I noted in the report that originally the officers were talking about the building uh, being completely of brick, but there's been insistence on using cladding. There have been a number of cases of uh, developments in Liverpool in recent years with where cladding hasn't gone well. And I just possibly just like some remarks on that and uh, the second one is uh, it looks fantastic the roof garden and loving your allotment uh, that high up in the air uh, has any thought been taken to kind of the windy conditions of that uh, that area is likely to experience Philip, would you like to come in and answer those questions please Yes, no problem. Um, to answer the first question in terms of the materials, we think the change in material on the building is, is key to retaining that character of the Baltic. I think if you just create another brick warehouse building or the appearance of a brick warehouse building, you're, you're going to lose something which is unique to the Baltic area, which is that sort of mix of the old and the new and enhancing what's there already, So, which is why we were keen to maintain that cladding change to the top of the building and really emphasize the change. Uh, in terms of the quality of the materials, yes, there have been some issues, um, some high profile buildings in the city because of the winds. We have provided um, the officers with a specification or an initial specification of the quality of product we, we anticipate using here to ensure it's not going to be something um, cheap uh, and poor in appearance. So we are intending to use good quality cladding products at the top of the scheme. And in terms of the, the rooftop allotment spaces, yes, we have. Um, we've obviously got a parapet protection around the side of the building, which the height can be, I think we've got up to about 1500 at the minute to, to allow some wind protection. We've also got an internal greenhouse um, section of that rooftop terrace to, to protect and shelter for, for any plants that are particularly sensitive to, to winds up there. So we have thought about it as much as we can at this stage, there will obviously be more detailed design um, with some specialists as we get to the detailed design stage. Okay. Thank you very much. Does that answer your question, Councillor Kennedy? Question? Yeah, no, that, that, that's fine, as long as people yeah. are thinking about that, yeah. Yes, yeah. And I'd imagine that if you get any beekeepers in London, they're doing better with their rooftop gardens. But yeah. Councillor Juarez.
I can't hear you, Pat. I, uh, I can hear you now. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the report, and there seems to be uh, some concerns from Kitchen Street um, that, um, you know, has has anybody consulted with them? Have you spoken to them prior to coming to planning, uh, as they have reservations for for the um, for this development on what it will have on the their on their business and what they have to offer in terms of the music scene to this particular area? And also, there's another uh, there's other objections from um, the Liverpool City Region Music Board board that. Um, in the report, it indicates that they have uh, serious concerns that um, the proposal that you're proposing today will have um, an impact on the music scene in the Baltic. Have you have you spoken to these two um, these two uh, th these two uh, people who are concerned about this, about your development in the area, and also? Um, you, you you have cycling spaces, but you don't have any parking spaces. Is it going to be sort of? Um, I, I find that you know you are you are relying on people not to have a car, but then again, you know sometimes some people might not work in the city and um, might need cars to drive. For example, if they work in Manchester but choose to live in Liverpool. Um, and, and Right. Well, I think it would be appropriate to ask Colin. But the question about the lack of parking is by the highways. But Colin, I'd ask you to give any to give now. Okay. Yeah, before Mr. Williams comes in, can I ask everyone else present, please ensure that your microphone's on mute, please, so it doesn't pick up on the audio feed. In fact, I will mute everyone now for, for convenience and to assist, just so everyone can hear quite clearly. Now, Colin, if you'd like to unmute your microphone and continue, and apologies for that brief disruption. Right, can you hear me now? Can, thank you. Right, thank you. Um, right, um, in terms of, we, we haven't discussed it directly with Kitchen Street. Um, Kitchen Street are fully aware of the application in the usual way that the consultations, statutory consultations were carried out, and they are um, very much involved in Baltic Creative, and there's often social media communications which we're aware of as well. Um, if you go into direct discussion sometimes with a neighbouring um, you know, user like that, it becomes very much a discussion where two individual commercial organisations are trying to discuss matters where at that, that stage you need to understand whether planning permission itself will be granted. Um, the thing, in terms of the way that the representations are often made about the agent of change, and that's certainly come through, I think, one of, at least one of the representations I've seen, is whether there should be a, a contract, in effect, a, a um, deed of easement, which, going back to some years in the planning committee here in Liverpool, when we dealt with the site next door, and that was very much focused on 24 Kitchen Street, that was a question that was put to the committee, whether you should be um, asking for a legal agreement for the applicant to enter into a deed of easement. Now, as a matter of law, you can't do that. You can't require a applicant to enter a deed of easement. You can ask them to sign a, a planning agreement. Um, but obviously here, it's about dealing with conditions of the, uh, to, to control the way the acoustic, the, this scheme itself will be insulated in terms of noise impacts. Um, that's the advice from the MPPF, paragraph 182. It's not about not engaging with them. We are fully engaged in the issues. They're fully aware of what's going on and what we've tried to do is to address the issue in terms of the way the agent of change principles come forward through planning. So then that's about demonstrating that this scheme can be mitigated to control any noise impact from them to, the, to, to do so. Um, so we, we haven't directly di uh, discussed it with them. In terms of the one from the music board, that's an that's a, a unusual one really because it's a general kind of um, representation saying you know the concern is about do you want to be supporting more and more residential developments in the Baltic and, and obviously the changing character of the Baltic over the years has very much been 
part of, of the residential mix. Without the residential mix, I, I, you know, I, I, I suggest you wouldn't be getting some of the vibrancy. You wouldn't be getting some of the character that's there. It very much lives between these different uses coming together and, and trying to live in relatively how you know harmony um, and that's the way that hopefully through the SRF and the way that each scheme comes forward and through your officers and the advice of your environmental health we come through and try and demonstrate that that scheme can actually um, you know come together it, it can have residents living in relatively peaceful enjoyment without having cause for, for a complaint so there's nothing about this scheme that should be any different than the scheme next door or any different to any other residential building that's coming forward in the in the Baltic so long as we can a put our conditions in place and get the scheme insulated and to be fair places like 24 Kitch Street need to imply you know, they'll do their own conditions because they have conditions about use they have conditions about hours of operation they have conditions about maintaining noise within the building and not having doors and windows opening late at night they're all conditions on their planning permission so the two sides have to work together as long as we do that, I do think that the, the scheme can be, um, you know, acceptable, and I hope you will, you know, accept that point. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, would the architect like to add anything on this? Mr. No, Burke, I think Colin's covered everything. Okay. <laughs> I think Colin's covered everything for the most part. Thank you. Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pass over. A to our planning officer now because I don't see any other indications from members. I know Councillor Thompson has a question at the end. It's not going to be our usual planning officer, Fergal McElroy, who's on leave. I think we've got Barbara Kirkbride here, have we? Would you like to come in now? Am I on? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you, yeah. Barbara. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, just before... Oh, sorry. Straightened off. Just, just before I start, I would like to just make one comment on the issue of cladding. Um, if approved, there is an informative on the permission, which will require the applicant to demonstrate to, to building control or to an inspector that it is structurally um, sound for its location. So that is included on the list of informatives. Um, more generally, you have the full report before you and also um, the that's been complemented by the presentation as indicated by by Colin and Phil there have been extensive discussions negotiations there have been some significant improvements both in terms of the layout of the building which has resulted in a better relationship to the street it's um, reactivated the street frontage um, the, and then there's added activity onto the more key streets um, and also, as has been mentioned, the removal of the two storeys from the kitchen street end of the scheme um, has resulted in um, a much more appropriate relationship with the cathedral in terms of any encroachment on the tower and also um, views into and out of the World Heritage site. This site is in the buffer zone. Um, so it's felt that the retention of the warehouse, uh, the three-storey warehouse, on the site is very welcome, as is the redevelopment of the surface car park. So um, there will be public benefits in the scheme in terms of bringing that site back into full beneficial use, providing a street um, frontage with um, associated activity. So on that basis, it's considered acceptable. Um, agent to change has already been mentioned. Um, and in terms of the impact on existing businesses and um, planning policy does state that new development must be able to effectively integrate with existing businesses and such businesses should not have unreasonable restrictions placed on them and this obviously includes um, late night music entertainment values and um, 24 kitchen streets have already been mentioned there are a number of others in the area they've evolved to become um, very popular and valuable assets to the Baltic Triangle and their importance is um, recognised but the application has been fully assessed in the context of the National Agent of Change principle um, which states that planning decisions as I say should take full account of existing businesses um, and in this instance uh, you will note in the report that um, a noise assessment has been undertaken and submitted by the applicants um, 
and that seeks to protect um, future residents from any noise. It's considered um, that that is that that does provide us. Sorry, if it should just go back and say about um, you, some mentions been made about comments from Twenty Four Kitchen Street and also the chair of the the music board. Um, now. 24 Kitchen Street don't raise formal objections, but what they do ask is that the scheme does take full account of the agent of change principle and that um, they are protected um, from noise complaints by future residents by a sufficiently robust um, acoustic package and that the agent of change principle is fully adhered to going forward. Um, War Councillor Sarah Doyle, and as I've mentioned, the chair have also raised similar concerns. <clears throat> And as I say, the noise assessment has been um, submitted and it proposes a full package of acoustic measures, which would need to be fully implemented prior to any residents moving in. The, um, these measures have been accepted by environmental health um, and it is considered, therefore, that the applicant has adequately addressed the agent to change principle um, in respect of any impact on the operation of existing business. Um, Ian, they wish, Ian Rushforth may wish to um, comment on that further. Um, we'll just mention the section 106. You'll see in the report that the scheme should attract a contribution of approximately £275,000 that the applicants have um, provided for an enhanced level of landscaping, including the use of granite, and um, particularly in terms of the, a new street, which is to be provided between the new and the existing building um, and pavements. So to off, offset this uplift in landscaping, the applicants provided a full cost schedule, which has been independently assessed. Um, and it was accepted by the assessors that the higher quality of materials resulted in an additional £58,000 worth of, of spend. So on that basis, it, it is considered appropriate that this figure be offset against the, the public open space money, which has resulted in a contribution of £229,000 approximately. The figures and what they relate to are all in the table in the report. So it's considered on that basis that all the relevant issues have been fully addressed by the applicants um, and that as revised with fairly significant um, revisions that the scheme is now acceptable and that the officers can support it. So, thank you. Before I bring in Councillor Thompson, can I just ask, would uh, Dr Ian Rushford want to comment about noise issues? If you do, it would be appropriate to come in now, Ian. Yeah, yeah happy to do so. Um, just, just to add to what Barb has covered a lot of the, the issues there already, but uh, just to add that um, the noise survey that was submitted with the application um, was carried out over a weekend period throughout the night and the 20 the club at 24 kitchen street was 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 in operation during that so i'm i'm satisfied that it is a robust assessment of the noise from 24 kitchen street and that, that therefore the, the the acoustic insulation scheme of the facade of this building has been as has factored in the noise emanated from kitchen street and so i'm happy that it's a, a robust assessment that will um, protect the club from complaints from from this application site one more one more point to add is that the the other scheme which, which referred to on the other side of, of simpson street uh, which is nearly built out now sits directly in between 24 kitchen street and this application site and will it in itself act as a further buffer for noise transmitting from the club to this this application site so i'm i'm happy that it's a robust assessment and that the noise has been factored in and the agents of chain has been changed appropriately that. And it's good to know that you um, do carry out your noise assessments at times when the noise is emanating. Thank you. Can yeah. I invite Councillor Helen Thompson? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. I actually had questions about cladding, but I think they've more or less been addressed by Councillor Kennedy and by our um, planning officer. Um, I see that um, you're also going to be verifying fire safety with regard to the cladding um, under the informatives. So I think all my questions about cladding have been addressed now. Thank you. 
Yeah, but thank you for putting the question, Councillor Thompson. Are there any more questions? Councillor Juarez. We can't hear you at the moment, Councillor Juarez. Can you unmute? Yes, Chair. Um, yes, I can my, hear you now. Okay, my concerns are um, the effect that it will have on the Great List of Ang Anglican Cathedral. Uh, I understand that the original warehouse was three floors, um, but now it, the proposal is seven and nine. But still, I have concerns that, you know, it will still have some uh, impact on the, the heritage assets of the cathedral and, um, you know, on, on the, um, the, the, the World Heritage Buffer Zone. Uh, the report says that it's accepted that there will still be some adverse impact on, on these assets. Um, so th those are my concerns. Um, can the officer, um, you know, enlighten me a bit more on that? Because I still feel feel concerned about the, these these Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I was Mitchin stated there were concerns, and the application has been amended. That there is some impact um, still. And on that basis, we were required to um, weigh up the public benefits because the, it's considered that the harm that would be caused would be less substantial. So um, I did touch upon it in terms of what we thought the public benefits were in terms of retaining the warehouse, um, bringing an underutilised um, site back into full use to activate the streets. Um, and by taking it back by the two storeys at the... The rear of the building, you do allow the views to the tower now, um, so that, that, that encroachment has been reduced. Um, there is the, the building that Colin Williams referred to, which is on site behind this, is a similar height as, as well. That's between seven and nine storeys. So I say um, it was a balanced argument, but we did consider on balance that um, the, the public benefits outweighed and it's acceptable from a heritage point of view. And we did see, didn't we, um, from the CGIs that were given by the architect that um, the reduction did ensure that we could see the tower of the Anglican Cathedral. Are there any other questions? Yes, Chair. Yes, briefly. Councillor Kennedy, if you'd like to come in. Yeah. It's kind of a carry on from Councillor Myrna Juarez's comments, but the I note and my understanding is that um, there have been various iterations of this scheme and the heritage um, officer had concerns on the original iteration, um, similarly the urban design specialist, but no comment had been received on this particular Version. I might take it, therefore, that they have dropped their concerns, or are their concerns still there? Um, no, I, th I think it was within the report. The heritage specialist now considers that the impact on the cathedral is acceptable, um, and uh, again, on balance, can be supported. Um, the urban design officer. Um, They've left, but we did engage with with another colleague. Um, it was it was more comments than objections, and amendments have been made, and uh, their comments were also related to scale, which have been addressed. And as as I think the report says, additional justification was requested um, and submitted by the applicant to fully um, demonstrate the the design rationale, which has been accepted by officers. Thank you, Barbara. Are there any other questions before I move to the vote? Okay, so can I move that the recommendation be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Do any members wish to move an amendment at this stage? Thank you, Councillor Juarez. If you just unmute your microphone. Thank you, Chair. Um, 
I would like to move that we don't accept this recommendation today. We don't approve it on the basis that um, it is accepted that the, in the report it states that it's accepted that there will still be some adverse impact on local heritage assets. So therefore, um, I class the development to be overdevelopment of the site uh, with a, the, the development having an effect on the World Heritage Buffer Zone and the views of the Liverpool Anglican Cathedral. So therefore, uh, Chair, um, I'm moving that we, we do not approve this application today. Okay, Michael. So thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Juarez. And again, just as a reminder to colleagues, if you're not speaking, please keep your microphone on mute because otherwise it is very disruptive to the audio feed, both for members listening here and as well for the public who are watching our live stream. Just to summarise what Councillor Juarez is seeking to move, if I may, she is moving refusal of the application as an amendment to the Chair's motion on the basis that the proposed development would have a substantial negative impact on the heritage context of the adjacent surrounding area and a be substantial ongoing negative impact on the setting of premises in terms of heritage assets within the World Heritage Site and views and vistas associated with the uh, Anglican Cathedral. I believe that's correct, Councillor Juarez. Does any member wish to actually second that? No. In which case, thank you for the amendment. However, that does fall and we will revert and conduct a vote on the chair's motion. So in terms of the chair's motion, which was to approve the recommendation subject to conditions and a legal agreement, chair your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Juarez. Against. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. <laughs> Apologies for that interruption there. Sound like there's something going on in the background. Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Hansen. Councillor Hansen, can you hear us okay? I'll come back to you. Councillor Cummings, I believe you've joined us now. Can you hear us okay? I certainly can, and I, I uh, support the application. Thank you. Councillor Conception? Great. Thank you. Councillor Hansen, to go back to you? Great. Thank you. And Councillor Lavelle, can you hear us okay? Great. Thank you. I believe that concludes the voting of those members who are present today. Uh, just for purposes of clarity, the voting is uh, eight members in favour and one member voting against, which is Councillor Juarez. And Councillor Juarez, I'll record your dissent by name also, if I may. Thank you. Subject to that, on that basis, the application is therefore approved and we will now move on to our next item of business, which is number five on today's agenda which relates to the Crafty Chandler on numbers 48 to 50 Bold Street, Liverpool 1 in Riverside Ward. Now, as the Chair is aware, we have no speakers for this application, but I do have some images, so if you bear with me, I'm going to display those on screen for you to assist. And uh, that will appear very shortly for you. That should be coming on screen for you now. And you'll be able to see, obviously, uh, a location plan showing the actual setting and context for the application site and if at this juncture can I ask the case officer if they'd like to talk and comment on the actual slides associated with the proposal. Okay, thank you. Um, so as you can see this application is to change part of the building, the Crafty Chandler, which is an existing um, bar um, on the corner of Bolt Street into a hotel. Now, the application was previously considered by this committee in June um, 2020 when you resolved to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement to pay a commuted sum. There have been no changes to the scheme. Um, the, reason, the only reason it's come back before you today is to request a change to the approved recommendation. Um, the scheme will attract a Section 10 contribution of £8,830 plus legal fees. This sum includes £8,000 towards provision and maintenance of street trees and £415 towards the preparation of a citywide public art strategy. 
As approved, the recommendation requires these sums to be paid upon the completion of the legal agreement. Um, this was an oversight um, when that report was written, and it should have required the payment upon commencement of development, which is standard procedure. So the report before you, therefore, just seeks approval to amend the previous recommendations so as to reflect the revised timescales for payment of the street tree and public art contributions. So I'll say no changes to the scheme, just the recommendation. Thank you, Barbara. Um, now, do we have any questions? I have a feeling um, that Councillor Juarez has still got the yellow hand up from the last item. I don't seem to have anybody else indicating. So I will move on to the vote. So can I move that the recommendation as amended be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Anyone members wish to move an amendment at this stage? No. In which case, uh, starting with those visible on screen, firstly, Councillor Cummings, your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Juarez? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Thompson? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Lavelle? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat? Agreed. Councillor Conception? Agreed. Thank you. And Councillor Hanson? Agreed. Thank you. That, I believe, concludes the vote for that application. Just to confirm, the voting is nine members in favour, no, none against, no abstentions, and the application is therefore approved on that basis. And we will now move on to agenda item number six, which relates to Fair Tree Drive South, Liverpool 12, which is in Croxteth Ward. Again, as the chair is aware, we have no speakers for this particular application. So I'm going to display on screen images of the application site and and some visuals to assist and I will ask the case officer once they appear on screen to then comment accordingly in terms of the context of the application before us today. Good morning Chair, members, um, John Hayes, a team leader for development management in the north of the city. Hopefully everybody can hear me and see me. I can hear and see you John, so carry on. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this is an application uh, that the committee are becoming very familiar with, uh, and it's for the installation of telecommunications equipment uh, comprising of a 20 metre high mast with associated equipment cabinets and the antenna. And again, it's as part of the rollout of 5G. Um, you'll see that the uh, location of the site is close to the junction of Woodley within the Crossworth Park uh, estate. Um, the proposed mast would be set on the opposite side uh, to the residential development um, and therefore would be seen against the backdrop of um, the grass verge and a very large tree belt uh, that forms part of the Croxus Park itself. Um, because of that context and because of its location, your officers are satisfied that in this particular case, the height of the mast uh, and its setting is acceptable and would not give rise to um, concerns around visual amenity uh, or wider clutter. There is there is a mast um, some 30 metres away, uh, much smaller, and for the reasons that have been set out in the report and explained on a number of occasions, uh, there are challenges that the uh, telecommunication industry has with the sharing with these types of facilities. So hopefully um, that covers all the issues, Chair, and that last slide there with the mast on shows you the um, the scale and the context. Happy to answer any questions, Chair. Uh, it is helpful that we got that last CGI, yeah. I'd like to add. Thank you for that, John. Are there any questions? I can't see anybody indicating, so I'm going to move on to the vote now. So can I move that the recommendation be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Do members have any comments or amendments at this stage before I actually conduct the vote? No. In which case, uh, Chair, your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Juarez? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Cummings? Agreed. 
Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Lavelle. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat. Agreed. Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Conception. Agreed. Thank you. And Councillor Hansen. Agreed. Thank you. That concludes the vote on our application. The voting is nine in favour, none against, no abstentions. The application is therefore approved on that basis. And we will now move on to our next item of business, number seven on today's agenda, uh, which relates to a site at Walton Breck Road, Liverpool 4 in Everton Ward. Similar to our last two items, I have no speakers registered to speak either for or against the application. If members will bear with me, I will put on a presentation on screen showing images of the application site just to assist. And once that's on screen, if I could ask uh, colleagues and the case officer just to uh, comment on the application accordingly. I should be coming on screen now. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mike. Um, if we could move the slides on a little bit, um, hopefully you, you can see the site location there. Um, so this is on a, a section of footpath uh, on Walton Breck Road, uh, the rear yard entrances of properties uh, to the west of Wire Road. Um, and it forms a substantial grass verge uh, bounding the highway. Um, hopefully we'll move on in a moment to some further images so that you can see a little bit more detail there in relation to the site. Um, the equipment here is slightly different to the uh, earlier item insofar as it is, um, firstly, it's a different operator, but also it is slightly lower. So this is one of the more familiar 15 meter high masts. Um, and again, it's the same, um, it, it's the same sort of principles uh, for you as a planning committee to consider whether or not the siting and design are acceptable. So that last image there uh, that's now on the screen shows you the um, height um, and context of that uh, telecommunications equipment. Um, and again, uh, in this particular case, your office is satisfied uh, that given that sort of urban context um, and its location, we're satisfied that it would not give harm, give rise to harm to visual amenity. But again, Chair, happy to answer any questions that members may have. Are there any questions? I don't see anybody indicating so I'm going to move to the vote. Can I move that the recommendation be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Do any members wish to actually move any amendments at this stage? No. In which case, uh, I will conduct a vote on the application. Just bear with me one moment, just while the screen catches up. Right. Firstly, uh, over to you, Councillor Juarez. Your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Cummings. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Lovell. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Marat. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Hansen. Agreed. Thank you. And Councillor Conception. Agreed. Thank you. That concludes the vote on that application. Just to confirm the voting is nine in favour, none against, no abstentions. Therefore, on that basis, the application is approved. And we will therefore move on to our next item of business, which for purposes of clarity is item number eight on today's agenda which relating to Scotland Road and Leeds Road, Liverpool 3 in Kirkdale Ward. Very similar to our last few items, Chair, I have no speakers registered, either for or against. So if you would again bear with me briefly, I will bring up some images of the application and proposal for you, just to assist in your consideration of it. Those should be on screen now, and if I could ask the uh, case officer to unmute the microphone and talk and address us in relation to the proposal. Thank you. I, again, Chair, another telecommunications mast uh, for you to consider. Uh, this is a 20 metre high mast, similar to the one that you've just considered in relation to Fertie Drive South. Um, clearly, the here, your um, the, the, the site um, in which the mast will be located is uh, on part of a busy uh, dual carriageway. 
Um, and obviously it's seen in that context and the context of existing um, highway uh, furniture. Um, I'm not sure we've got an image coming in a moment, um, but you'll be able to see uh, that context. There we are. Um, and again, it's very simple in terms of the um, issues that this committee and your officers have to take into account. It's whether or not the siting and design of these masts is appropriate in a wider street scene. And again, your officer's conclusion in this particular case is given where it is to be located, the height and the design of that mast and its location are all acceptable. And we have therefore recommended approval. Happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? No, I do not see anybody indicating. So again, I'm going to move straight to the vote. Can I move that the recommendation be approved? Is that agreed? Thank you, Chair. Again, similar to our last item, Councillor Juarez, your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Cummings. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor O'Brien. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Laval. Agreed. Councillor Marat. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Hansen. Agreed. Thank you. And Councillor Conception. Agreed. Thank you. That concludes the voting on this item. Voting is nine in favour, none against, no abstentions, and the application is therefore approved on that basis. We now move on to our next item of business, which is agenda item number nine, relating to number 115, Anfield Road, Liverpool 4, which is in Anfield Ward. Uh, whilst I bring some images on screen, if I can just ask the chair to introduce any additional speakers we have for this item. Um, I'd like to invite Dave Morse to address the committee, please. Morning, Chair. Just to confirm, Morning. I'm here, Morse. To... Sorry? Yeah, I'm just confirming we can hear you, Dave. Great stuff. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to confirm, I'm here more to answer questions. Uh, should members have any um, where I, uh, I previously presented the application for this for this item. Right, well, we do, um, as you know, we have considered this before. It's the old police station. So Dave Morse is here to address any questions that any members may have. So I'd like to invite questions now. To Dave, and then we'll ask our planning officer to com uh, to comment. Okay. Well, I don't see any questions, so can I hand over to the planning officer, please? Ch Chair, if I may, I I'd understood that uh, possibly there was a councillor wishing to object to this. I may be wrong. Yeah. Sorry, I'm wrong. Uh, I'm wrong well, to do that. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I Thank need you. to invite councillor Lena Simic to come in now before I invite you to come in, John Hayes. Councillor Simic, would you like to address the committee now, please? Hello? Hello, we can hear you now, Lena. Would you like to carry on? Yes, can you see me? Yeah, great. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Councillor Lena Simic and I represent Anfield on behalf of its residents. So uh, here we have another B&B for Anfield with many objections from the local residents. This particular area of Anfield Road is already overloaded and we have the arcles there and the hotel arc to arrive. We have in Anfield Ward. HMOs, houses of multiple occupancies, left, right and centre. And what is happening is that the area is only catered for visitors and not for our residents. And our residents have had enough of this. Some of them are moving away. Anfield has had no population growth since 2010. So who would want to move into this area and how do we keep our residents in Anfield? The issues are so big. There was a, an article in the Echo about this. Landmark near Anfield Stadium set to become hotel for Liverpool football club fans. 
Overall, it's an endless story of too many BNBs, hotels, Airbnbs, HMOs. What we desperately need in Anfield is a community center, amenities for the residents, not yet another visitor's BNB. There are issues with parking, as you can imagine, traffic, pollution. Anfield is the third highest ward out of 87 with the greatest level of need. 40% of children live in poverty, third most deprived ward in Liverpool. We are the third highest ward for number of complaints received from private sector households, 41 private rented, 41% privately rented. So overall, this is just another example of not privileging the residents on Anfield, but developers and visitors. So giving you a bit of a context, I suppose. For all these reasons, I object to this development and I speak on behalf of Anfield residents that I represent. Thank you. Chair, you're still on mute. Yeah, sorry about that. It's just I have my notes up and I have to get my notes down before I can come off of mute. Are there any questions, please? Councillor Marat has indicated, please, Chair. Councillor Marat. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I agree with the comments from Leonard Simic. Um, Anfield is already full of bed and breakfast. This is now the tenth one in Anfield. It all comes about due to the success and probably the uh, expansion of Liverpool FC, but it is forcing decent residents who have lived there for years away because some of these bed and breakfasts had extra uh, problems to uh, City Council uh, rubbish collections and also noise and antisocial behaviour. And it's about time to call a halt with all the HMOs and everything else in Anfield. Sorry. But no, we've had enough. We're calling time. So I will be voting against this application. Are there any other questions or points? Can I come in, Chair? Um, is this um, you, Dave? No, Dave Joe Hanson. Hanson. Hanson, sir. All right, yes. Carry on, Joe. Chair, Chair. At, at, the, at the last discussion, it centred around a, a bed and breakfast facility, and now the report is saying it's a hotel. Uh, so I'm, I'm unclear where the change comes in. As far as I'm concerned, it's a bed and breakfast facility. What the, the, the report is asking us to do is to support a, an establishment that is in close proximity, in fact, over the road to a number of uh, terraced houses and a small number of streets, um, which noise will, noise will carry. And the sadness about it is that the bed and breakfast is aimed at the, the football fraternity. So the game finishes at 10 o'clock. The residents are about to put up with the noise from the, from, from the crowd inside the ground. Ordinarily, what would happen is as the ground lets out within 20 minutes, everybody's cleared, 25 minutes, everybody's cleared. Now we're going to have a bed and breakfast with a bar, which will be the, with, with, with the watering hole for many, many people. So that noise and disturbance, whether we like it or we dislike it, will continue till 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whenever that licensed premises has, has, has got. I think the two councils from Anfield are absolutely spot on in relation to the um, the lack of care, I believe, as a as a council and certainly as a planning committee, we are giving to the residents ar around Anfield. Every application that comes through, no matter what adverse impact or what noise nuisance it creates with it, seems to go through this committee. Um, not always easily, but it also always seems to get through through the committee and through council. And it ends up the only people taking the hit are the, the residents from from uh, Anfield. So I tend to agree with, with, with Billy and Lemmer that the you know, this this is a bridge too far. I think we should be saying as a, as, as, as a committee, I'm sorry, we're not accepting your application for for a bar. 
Um, and we'll, we will, we'll do what we need to do to ensure that that doesn't happen. So I'll be supporting Billy. If Billy moves a, 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 a motion uh, to reject this, I'll be supporting Billy in, in, in that. And I, think, I would hope that the, the, the members of the planning committee, and I'm not being disrespectful to any of our officers or to you, Chair, because I, I know you will move a, a recommendation to support this claim. But I think at some point, it is the, the responsibility of this committee to say enough's enough and stop what you're doing as I start putting the residents of Anfield first and not as a, as a secondary thought. And I'll finish on that point, Chair. But I do need to point out, as I'm sure our planning officer will, that the um, recommendation about the licensing for the bar is not within the power of this committee. That is something for licensing. Um, I'd now like to invite uh, Councillor Anthony Lavelle to come in. I will be asking um, Dave Morse to come back. But let's take all the councillor points first. Councillor Lavelle. Thank, thanks a lot, Chair. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief. I'm just obviously concerned that now we've got three councillors, two of them who actually are sitting on the committee, raising the points around... Um, noise pollution and the nuisance is going to cause to um, neighbouring um, terrace properties. Having read the proposal, and I know it's not something which is for our consideration, it does state that there will be no bar or hospitality facilities on the premises. Can I just seek some clarity on that and reassurance, please, from the officer or from the agent? Actually, that's the appropriate point. It, it, I am going to hand straight over to Dave Morse and then I'll invite Mr uh, Cummings. Can I come in at all, Chair? Uh, well, I'd like to ask uh, Dave Morse, who's here to answer questions, to answer Councillor Lavelle's question first. Then I'll bring in Councillor Cummings, then you, Malcolm. Dave, would you like to answer Councillor Lavelle's question, please? Yeah, of course, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, just to confirm, this application, both first time round, where respectfully I would sort of uh, suggest that, you know, all the issues around the bed and breakfast were sort of considered, discussed and debated at that time. Uh, just to confirm, the applicant has not changed anything on the application. There is no intention to install a bar. There's no intention to sell alcohol. This is a bed and breakfast facility. Um, clearly, um, powers were delegated back to your officers in respect of just uh, restricting the use of a bar, uh, which regrettably, despite you know lengthy conversations, we were unable to do. But I would add that um, the applicants would need to go through the licensing regime in order to sell alcohol. It is not their intention to do so, but that level of control remains, albeit in a different regime to that of the planning. So I think that's that's all I can say at this moment. Right, you. Uh, on to Councillor Cummings, who's been indicated for some time. Then I'm going on to Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Cummings first. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just, I just want to, I just want to reiterate the points of, of which Councillor Simic raised, and in that context, I fully understand and agree with everything that she said. Yes, we must recognise that Liverpool Football Club are in that area, and we have to understand that there will be places of uh, of establishments to stay for the visiting supporters. However, however. As well, Councillor Simic has, has stated that there is far too much there, and it's a residential area as well. And we, as representatives, have to recognise and support and respond to the people in the city of Liverpool and in Anfield. And where my point is, there is the saturation, and there are other areas around Anfield that can take on such establishments as this um, application. So in that context, I will not be supporting this. Can I invite now, please? I apologise if I'm disturbed because we've suddenly got a, a storm here in Madrid with uh, the thunder going somewhere, somewhere. We can hear you clearly, actually, Malcolm. Good. So, well, yeah. my, 
I'm rather concerned about the question of consistency here. My understanding of when we recently considered this uh, proposal, we were reasonably happy to approve, except we wanted extra strength in the uh, uh, proposal through some kind of legal agreement that a bar would not be allowed. What's come back to us is a uh, information which uh, I think is clear and with which I agree that this is not a matter for the planning committee but for licensing. It would be for licensing to agree whether there was a bar or not. However, the original proposal without a bar uh, as I understand it, the, the planning committee were minded to approve if we could have that extra, extra protection. As we can't have that extra protection through law, and it's a matter for planning, I think the consistency demands that the planning committee continue to support this proposal. Totally understand what uh, local councillors are saying, one of which is on the committee. Um, but I think this is an emotional response, not a planning response, and I will be voting for the proposal. Councillor Cummings, now there's quite a few people who've already spoken who still have their virtual hands up. Do any of them want to come in again? Councillor Hanson, you've put your hand up, so I know you want to come in again. Hear me now. Yes, I can hear you. <coughs> Excuse me, Chair. The, the, the whole ethos behind the, the bed and breakfast and the, the applicants saying, no, 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 we don't want a bar, we're not doing a bar, whatever. We hear that all the time. I heard the same discussion, the same debate of the Phoenix pub being converted into bed and breakfast. No, we don't want uh, a, a license. We're just a bed and breakfast. Uh, it is now fully licensed. Yeah, it's open till all hours, whatever, whatever, and I'm sure I'll be going back to licensing um, with, with, with that issue at some point in time. It is about the, for, for me, it is about the impact, whether we have a bar there or not. You're going to have people come to the matches. If they're not, not saying in the locals, they'll be going to town, coming back with the taxis and whatever, the noise nuisance that that creates for the people living in that area. If you don't know the area, it is smart, the, the, the amphi, that's on Anfield Road, you've got terraced houses facing it. All the side roads offer a little small terraced houses. The noise carries all over the place. And it's in terms of, does Anfield require another bed and breakfast? Well, no, it doesn't. And for God's sake, let's start thinking about the people who live in and around Anfield. Just for once in our lives, let's put them first. Let's put them first because they're the people who suffered the consequences of our decisions. And I accept what Malcolm's saying. I think he's wrong. It's not emotion. It's looking at it hard and fast that says, actually, is enough enough? And I believe two councillors from, from, from Anfield are saying, enough is enough, and I think they should be supported. Thanks, Chair, for letting me in. Yes, uh, Councillor Hanson, but uh, Councillor Kennedy's other point does remain uh, about consistency. Now, um, I'm going to hand over to our planning officer now because the other people who had virtual hands up seem to have put them down. So can I hand over to our planning officer now, please? Thank you, Chair. Hopefully I will try and uh, pick up on the various points and discussion that have uh, taken place. Um, but I think it will be helpful if I just take you through um, the first report um, and then perhaps take you through the original report. So the, the, the first report just gives you some history to this particular um, application and the consideration of the uh, of the matter. So as you'll see, this was an item that came to you back in May, um, as has already been pointed out by uh, a number of the uh, planning committee. There was uh, considerable debate, um, expressions of concern uh, about the proposal as well, um, and the debate hinged predominantly on this issue of a bar. I think there was a lot of concern uh, by members that notwithstanding the assurances that we've been given by the applicant, um, 
they wanted that certainty through some form of additional planning control through a planning condition or an associated legal agreement that the uh, use of the facility as a bed and breakfast uh, would not have a bar and therefore effectively would not be licensed. Um, and so the committee resolved um, to grant the planning permission, but on the understanding that officers would go away and seek to impose a further condition or a legal agreement that sought to uh, restrict the ability of the premises to have a bar and or be licensed. So as you've heard from uh, the applicant, the intention still remains um, through the application process that it will not have a bar. However, your officers in discussion with the applicants and in discussion with colleagues in legal have concluded that the conditions being requested by the planning committee back in May would not be uh, lawful in that they would not satisfy the various statutory tests for the imposition of uh, conditions. So obviously you've got two different regulatory regimes to consider. One is the planning process and the other is the licensing process. The physical installation of a bar of itself um, would not require planning permission because obviously it's an internal alteration, it's internal work. So you could create a bar area, if you like, um, w within that building without the need for any planning permission. The sale of alcohol within that bar area then, as you've heard from the applicant, would be subject to licensing control. And it, it, it's that concern uh, that members had about ensuring that it wasn't licensed in accordance with the applicant's um, um, proposal um, that we've not been able to um, conclude and, and, and in a way that would satisfy the, the previous aspirations of this committee. So that's why this report is back before you. Um, because obviously it, it's now open to you to reconsider the matter again in the light of this further information that we can't, through the planning process, uh, control the uh, premises in the way that was originally sought. So going back to the original proposal, Chair, obviously you've got the full report in front of you. The building is an attractive building. It's a former police station. It's on the corner of a residential street. Uh, it might be helpful at this point if we can just get a site plan up um, so you can see the context of it. Um, I'll carry on talking while, while we can sort that out. Um, the proposal is to change the uh, the building into a bed and breakfast. Um, bed and breakfast and hotel are, are the same use classes, so the terms uh, to, to pick up on Councillor Hampson's point are, are fairly interchangeable. Um, it will be 26 rooms and it will be a total of 70 beds. And we've gone through all the issues on that original report, um, the, the, the pick up on the objections, some of which you, you've heard again um, this morning. Um, your officer's view is that the principle of a hotel in this location is acceptable. Um, clearly, there is the potential for increased noise, activity and so on. Again, as Councillor Hampton has pointed out, it, it's not just the issue of the bar that you as a planning committee need to consider. It is the impact uh, of the whole development uh, and obviously that's open to you as a planning committee to consider that um, with or without the, the, the bar facility and obviously again in, in paragraphs three onwards we, we talk in some depth in the report about the impact on residential amenity um, and, and your officers have concluded that uh, given the wider context um, and given the location of it, given the size of it, your officers are satisfied that it would not give rise to significant um, amenity concerns. The other issues, Chair, I think um, uh, are, are fully addressed in the original report around inclusive design, parking access and so on. The, there's just one other point that I want to pick up on um, in, in terms of Councillor Simic's uh, comments uh, and, and um, supported by Councillor Marrett, and, and that's this wider issue of um, the, the change that's currently taking place in and around the Anfield area, particularly with uh, B&Bs and uh, HMOs. I think your officers understand those concerns. We recognise there are some challenges in the Anfield area. Um, we've had a number of cases reported to us by the local ward councillors. However, they are largely around the sort of what I would call the unlicensed or uncontrolled um, facilities. So people are buying properties um, in and around the Anfield area, close to the stadium, 
to rent them out to football fans at the weekend um, and using them as, um, uh, you know, as, as Airbnb type accommodation. Um, that is a challenge for us as offices in terms of the extent of control that we've got. Um, HMOs are clearly uh, different in terms of their use class. Um, and again, this committee is familiar with the issues that, that HMOs uh, raise. The, the point I would emphasize in relation to this particular application is you have got a managed facility. So whereas the concerns that have been expressed by the, the, the local ward councillors uh, includes those unlicensed or uncontrolled uh, facilities. In this particular case, you would have an application that is properly managed 24-7. Um, there are conditions on the uh, application that we're recommending to you, in, including, for example, restricting external access, um, controlling the use of the um, ground floor areas to limit the range of activities that might be able to take place there, um, and so on. And I think... Be, it, 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 it's when it's looked at in that totality uh, where you're looking at those conditions that we've also uh, recommending uh, that uh, your officers have concluded that the original scheme, uh, sorry, the scheme as originally put forward to you um, is acceptable. So the recommendation remains as it was back in May, the planning permission is granted subject to those conditions and obviously for the reasons set out in that further report, we would not be able to uh, impose a condition that restricts the ability to have a bar to the implications of that going forward. Happy to answer any questions, Chair. Yes, okay. Well, we have a question from Councillor Cummings. Uh, John, I, I just want to come back to um, something that you mentioned in your address there, and you said the word impact. Um, and that really hit home to me because what, what I've heard from the local council is what I know about the area um, and the issues that I raised before. The impact would be about the noise in, mm -hmm. in that um, in that new establishment, uh, the extra refuse issues of that establishment, the cars that would be parked around that establishment, the overcrowding of the, the amount of people staying in the establishment, and incorporating all of those things, overall antisocial behaviour from the people in that establishment, they're the impacts that come to me when you use that word. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I acknowledge those, those, those points, Councillor Cummings, and, and those issues are matters uh, that you as a planning committee are perfectly entitled to take into account. Your officers have put forward uh, their position in relation to this. We're satisfied. Uh, that there are controls through the application that would limit the impact of this, but clearly uh, any development, any further use of this property is going to bring a level of activity. Um, it, it's a matter of judgment as to whether or not you consider that activity would be harmful to uh, the amenity of the surrounding residents. Your officer's view is that, that the controls that are in there and the scale of it would not give rise to significant impact. Clearly, any development will have some impact, as, as Councillor Hanson has pointed out, there will be taxis and so on. But I think our experience as officers is that sometimes these concerns um, are perhaps sometimes overstated and that actually uh, these facilities can uh, successfully, operated, uh, successfully operate without uh, harm to residential amenity. Um, so ultimately, it's a matter for this, this committee. for that uh, John and um, I would like to move to the vote now but I would also like to uh, all right Billy Marrett wants to come in Thank you, Chair. yeah I would like to raise an amendment please to what you're going to propose so it's over to you then Michael Chair, you will need to formally move the uh, resolution to approve the recommendation first, and then obviously that's, that's the point at uh, which Councillor Mallet can move his I, amendment. I will move the, this recommendation on the basis that the licensing issue should go to licensing committee. It's been made perfectly clear it's not within our power or remit. And I would also like to mention that we want the police station to be developed, and this development will be managed. So on that basis, I would like to move that the recommendation be approved. 
and I hope you will agree with me. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Mallet, I believe you indicated to move an amendment. Yeah, I'd like to move an amendment, Michael, on the basis of a 70, 70 bed, bed and breakfast, the impact it will have on residents, the possible, no, well, not possible, but the extra noise and pollution of the area, and the extra resources put on the City Council cleaning services, etc. Just to uh, assist Councillor Mallet, and just, just to summarise, essentially what you're moving is that uh, the application be refused on the basis of the proposed development would lead to a substantial increase in noise, nuisance and antisocial behaviour associated with the intensification of use of the premises, which in turn would have a negative impact on residential amenity. That, I believe, is you, it summarises. Does any member wish to second that amendment? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor, Ca Councillor Hanson. Thank you. Just for purposes of clarity, uh, in respect to the outcome of the, of the uh, vote, were the amendment to be approved, the decision will not be made at this decision of committee. This would require a further report to be submitted to our next available committee, which again will include a further officer assessment and commentary in terms of the potential reasons set out in members' views. With in mind, I'll now conduct a vote on the amendment. So. All those in favour of refusal for the reasons stated. Councillor O'Brien, you firstly. I'm against refusal. Thank you. Councillor Conception. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Against. Thank you. Councillor Hanson. For. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Against. Thank you. Councillor Mallet. For. Councillor Juarez. Against. Councillor Lavelle. No. Councillor Cummings. Just, just confirm your vote again, Dave. Didn't quite catch that. Councillor Cummings, just, just confirm. For. Thank um, you. I'd like that recorded, please. OK, just to confirm the outcome of the vote on the amendment. Three members have voted in favour of the amendment, which was to refuse. Six members have voted against the amendment, so the amendment falls. For those three members who voted against, in fact, rather in favour of the amendment, would you like your names explicitly recorded? Yes. OK. Yes, please. We now revert to the chair's motion, which was to approve the recommendation. So again, the same process will apply. Starting with you firstly, Chair. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Conception. Mm. Thank you. Councillor Thompson. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Hanson. Abstaining. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Mallet. Just, just unmute your microphone, please, Billy. Sorry, again. Thank you. Councillor Juarez. Agreed. Councillor Lavelle. Agreed. And Councillor Cummings. Stand, I'd like that recorded, please. Was that against, please, just for clarity, because just missed the Yes, I'd, and I'd like that recorded as well. I'll do the same for Councillor Mallet as well. Just to confirm the outcome of the vote, Thank that you. is six members in favour, two members against, one abstaining. Therefore, the application is approved on that basis. And we'll now move on to our final item of business today, which relates to number eight, Balcaris Avenue, which is in Liverpool 18, which is Greenback Ward. Chair, as you can see, we do have some speakers for this application, both for and against. So if you bear with me, I will bring on a presentation and then we can bring our speakers in. However, I know that our speaker, Neil Colquhoun, who is for, is just here to answer questions. So if we could have the presentation now. Thank you, Chair. That should be on screen now. Just Chair, I believe... See that. Hi, Stuart Clark here, team leader of the South team. Can everyone hear and see me? I can hear you, Stuart, so carry on. Yeah, I'm just, just 
going on, Chair, from the, um, the, the, the table note, I believe there's an objector. There is, is as well. Would you like me to dig to go first, or would you like the objector? I think it'd be sensible if we take the objector's views first, yes, if we may. Yes, let's take the objector first, but I noticed that um, Michael brought up the, the map, so that's fair enough. But yes, we'll hear from the objector now. Hi, so this is uh, Tony Fargo speaking. I'm one of the neighbours of number eight ball carries. Uh, I've read the reports that came back from the previous planning committee when further questions were asked. Uh, it's disappointing to see that there's not possibility to have uh, enhanced noise attenuation because the neighbours, the direct neighbours of the properties do suffer significantly from uh, rowdy uh, residents. Uh, one of the reports mentions the idea that antisocial behaviour, that our recourse there would be to go to the management company. Uh, so for our feelings there is that we're basically at the mercy of the neighbours and the management company. I don't know what uh, rules or procedures are in place to make sure the management company do a, a good job. The, the current residents at number number eight are quieter than the previous ones, but nevertheless, they managed to have a big party just two weeks ago, probably breaking all COVID regulations, and that ended in the course of the evening with someone urinating in the street. So, I mean, for us, this is a quiet family street, lots of couples, young people, uh, families, there's young children, under seven on one side and under one year old on the other. And so for us, this this problem with the noise, we see that as a big issue. Seven is a seven bed HMO is a huge HMO for this street. Uh, on the other topic I wanted to mention was the idea which comes back in the report uh, that you can assume low car ownership. I mean, for us, we, we make our own observations and we can see that that is clearly going to be a problem even when number eight was empty in sort of April time. The car the street was regularly full, so with 21 cars, full to the very end of the street. And to such a degree that uh, for about four weeks in succession, the bin lorry couldn't even make it down the street to empty the bins. So we had re regular problems there. We got involved with the councillors, uh, Robertson Collins and James Roberts, to assist with this problem. So really for us i mean that assumption just does not hold true this low car ownership if you've got final year students postgrad students mature students you can there's a fair likelihood that they will have cars this street is already full and with the potential of up to seven new cars in the street i think there is an issue last year the uh, the residents had five cars between them so i would challenge the assumption of low car ownership in a street that's already overflowing with cars from this street and from neighbouring streets. So people on Crawford Avenue uh, park on our street too for convenience. And uh, that's all I had to say really. Are there any questions for Mr Parker? I don't see anybody coming up. Is Councillor Cummings indicating? Or is that from before? No. Um, right, um, I'll hand over now to um, you, Stuart. Thank Stuart, you, Chair. Team leader. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, members may recall that this application came before them in January, um, where it was deferred uh, to allow officers to go and explore further matters in relation to bin and cycle storage, sound insulation and parking issues. Um, your officers have gone away uh, and sought to find that out for members, and that's they're all clearly reported in your papers today. Um, I will very briefly go through them. Um, all the information is in your papers and the, uh, the applicant is here, I believe, to answer any questions should members have any specific questions in, in relation to this. So in relation to bins and cycles, um, the yard, it, it, it's about eight square metres and it, it can easily hold four bins and has three cycle racks. Um, this is considered to be wholly appropriate for a seven bed HIMO. Uh, so your officers have no issue with the ability for the, for the premises in terms of bin and cycle storage. In terms of sound insulation, uh, this is clearly detailed in your papers, um, and you'll see that there's no building regulations requirement for sound tests, and that any specification of acoustic insulation is at the owner's discretion. Uh, we, we went back to the applicant and tried to get a bit more information on this, and this is again detailed in your papers, where he's confirmed that 12 and a half mil 
sound reducing plasterboard was used uh, in refurbing the property. So uh, whilst therefore, Chair, the concerns of neighbours are noted, there is no requirement for sound insulation to be applied, either under building regs or the plan legislation. And it's predominantly down to the management of the premises um, that would control matters such as noise. Uh, and finally, Chair, in relation to the parking side of things, um, as, again, as you'll see from your papers, it's accepted that Balcaraz Avenue is quite parked up, um, but uh, these, these type of uses do attract lower levels of car ownership, and it is in very close proximity, good public transport links and local goods and services with two district centres within nearby walking distance. Any additional parking that it may generate, uh, the Head of Highways and Transportation accepts that Balcaraz Avenue is relatively parked up. He's happy that it could be accommodated in the nearby surrounding streets for what limited amount there would be. So um, that's pretty much it, I'm afraid, Chair. Uh, everything else is in your papers. The original report is also attached as an appendix, which deals with the wider issue of, of HIMOs, which, which this committee will be fully aware of. Um, the property itself is fully compliant. Um, and your officers are happy to recommend approval, but I'm happy to answer any questions, Chair. Are there any questions either for the case officer here or for Mr. Colquhoun, who's um, here on behalf of the applicant? Councillor Hanson. Thank you, Chair. Um, th and, and thanks for the reports to us. Um, what, what does concern me is the, the relation of the throwaway remarks from, from highways. Yeah, the road is full of traffic, but you can go back somewhere else, it doesn't matter. I, 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 just, I just find that disrespectful to the, the residents of, of, of the road. Yeah, you know, and, and to throw away remark, I don't think our residents deserve that kind of throwaway remark from our officers. Now, I don't think there's anything we can do about it here today, but we'd certainly like that taken back and have more discussion, more debate on on, on traffic and traffic issues, we recognise that a road is, is full of cars. So the, the, if the, the students, or even, indeed the residents, can't park on that road, they can go park somewhere else. I know I haven't got a right to park outside my house. I must have some, there must be something that says, I, I live there, but I've got to go and park somewhere mm -hmm. else. And I don't think that's right, I don't think that's proper. I don't think there's anything I can do about it today. But I certainly would like some discussion at a senior level within within council about how we how we tackle that kind of issue, and not get a throwaway remark from highways. I think it's been disrespectful to the people living in that area. To be truthful, I do think you've made your point, Councillor Hampson, um, and maybe highways will um, be able to address the issue. But we we know that even if this wasn't uh, an HMO that people would have a right to have a car and as you pointed out we don't have the right to necessarily occupy the parking space outside our own homes are there any other questions please okay well seeing as there are not any other questions i am going to move that the recommendation be approved is that agreed Thank you, Chair. Do any members wish to comment further or move an amendment before I take the vote? No. In which case, Chair, your vote, please. Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Conception? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Thompson? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Hanson? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy? Agreed. Councillor Marat? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Juarez? Agreed. Thank you. Councillor Lavelle. The reasons that the resident raised around overdevelopment of the area and overcrowding of the property, I'll be voting against. Okay. And Councillor Cummings. I think Councillor Cummings may not actually be on the call anymore, colleagues. Okay, in which case that I believe will conclude. The vote on the application. The voting therefore is seven members in favour and one member voting against, which is Councillor Lavelle. Would you like your name recording expressly in terms of your dissent? Okay, will do. Thank you.
that therefore concludes debate on our application and the outcome of the vote is the application is approved on that basis. Chair, your closing comments, please. I'd like to point out that Councillor Cummings did um, apologise to me that he would have to leave after a certain amount of time, and he's obviously done so. So I got his apologies about that in advance. Um, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everybody else, for attending today. Uh, we have finished a little bit earlier than we often do, but it was a shorter agenda. But we are going to have a break now, and our next planning meeting won't be now until September. So I think that we've done really well, I'd like to say. I'd like to hear of any other planning authority in the country, even, that's had 13 meetings during this lockdown. So well done, all of you, and your attendance has been excellent. So thanks for all the hard work that's gone into this city still delivering on its planning decisions. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in September. And thanks to all the officers. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, colleagues. And that concludes the live stream of today's proceedings. And thank you for colleagues who've joined us and will watch proceedings today. <laughs>